This is why Underworld is the best vampire film franchise ever. Straight off the bat, this is the best vampire franchise origin film ever. There has never been, like when you look at the Dracula and Toads and the Twilights, there's no other origin film that sums up this amount of lore and history on vampires in one movie. I still think Underworld Evolution is the best vampire film ever made, which I will be covering next week. A little shout out. This one is a close 1B. I wouldn't even call it a second. It's 1A and 1B. The attire, the setting, the lore, the lichens, the vampire versus lichens, and the future human war. It's all chef's kiss. Perfect. It's all perfect. It's such a perfect franchise. It's such a perfect franchise. It's the most realistic and accurate version of vampires, in my opinion. I mean, they're stronger than humans. Lichens are stronger than them. And they're not like that physically strong or like over the top fast where they're basically the Flash or Superman. They're like, yeah, they're kind of fast. They can kind of jump high. But the main thing is immortality. That's the biggest thing with vampires. They're immortal and they drink blood and they can't go in the sun. They don't have to be Superman also. I also love how uh, Blade had to be rewritten because they just tried to copy the Underworld franchise. I mean, come on, do better. The lore and the history of the vampires with Victor, Marcus... And William is what I picture when I think of the word vampire or werewolf. When I think of vampire, I think of Victor, Celine, Marcus. When I think of werewolf, I think of William and Lucian. It's a, a man wolf and there's a man who can turn into a wolf. Those are the two different types of werewolves. And then for vampire, you have like the sort of bat creature, which is the original, who has wings is the strongest of them all and is the original vampire. And then you just have the normal vampires, which can live forever, like I said before. And Victor, like the actor that even plays him, Bill Nighy just looks like a vampire. So that helps the role. It may be the fact that I watched these movies as a kid, as I was falling in love with vampire cinema, Twilight included. I don't know if it's the nostalgia and serotonin it's flowing through my cerebral cortex from watching these movies as a kid. But I don't think so. Especially re-watching these films, I noticed a lot. One, I learned as a kid I had great taste in films. <laughs> Two, was the reason I love these movies. The filmmaking. The filmmaking is amazing. I mean, the set production, fantastic. The entire film is set in this like dark night. It, the whole film is at night and the lighting is perfect. So, Right off the bat, knockoff job. It also has like this setting where you're kind of in a different reality, but it's very similar to our reality. So it's like just a shade off, but like it's believable. Like it's not like the MCU kind of when you really don't believe that you could be in there sometimes. The entire film, you feel like you're in a different universe that is akin to ours but slightly different. The whole franchise has this tone, but this movie in particular does a lot with a little. I mean, the budget for this film was $22 million. In, in like 2003, that wasn't a horrible budget. I have two movies right here. X2, X-Men, the second movie, had a budget of $110 million. And Hulk, not Edward Norton or Mark Ruffalo, had a budget of $137 million. Both those films were released in 2003, the same year as Underworld. The latter being horrendous comparing it to Underworld. I just mean, like, if you would have gave this film the budget that Universal gave to the Hulk, we could have had literally the greatest piece of vampire fiction. It already is. And imagine you threw a hundred more million dollars on that. Oh my god. Come on. The costumes all look perfect. To the Death Dealers. To Victor's like leather jacket. To the Lycan's transformation. To the Lucian's dope leather jacket with the swords in them. Like where do you get that? I mean some of the best vampire teeth in cinema. Like they're always out. It's not like a thing that pops out. They always have their teeth out. And it always looks great. And I mean... The scene where Celine is biting Michael it might be the best vampire bite scene in all the vampire movies. Fight scenes hold up remarkably well. I mean, this film was released 20 years ago. And that Victor vs. Michael fight scene, you could put in any movie today. If you were releasing a new Underworld movie and, or any new vampire movie, and that was the fight scene at the climax, 
I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be like, oh shit, the CGI was horrible. Like, of course the lichens could be done up a little bit more. It's almost like a more believable way of how they did it with the little they had, how they look like dogs. Like, it's so perfect, man. And Victor's head sliding off is just iconic. That is just iconic. Perfect. And yeah, that's all I got for this one. Next time we will tackle my favorite vampire movie of all time, Underworld Evolution. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. If you guys want to hear a little more of me talking, check out the Denzel Can I Show wherever you listen to podcasts or check out the YouTube channel. That's all I got for you guys. Peace. Bitches with the champagne. champagne. I'm the new light skin, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne.